This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. In 2020, the United States hit a record high in its yearly use of one of the most ubiquitous manufactured materials on Earth, cardboard. With around 80% of all products sold in the United States being packaged in cardboard, over 120 billion pieces were used that year. In fact, in 2020 alone, over 13,000 separate pieces of consumer cardboard packaging was thrown away by American households. When combined with all paper products, this constitutes almost 42% of all solid waste generated by the United States annually. However, despite the sheer magnitude of this paper waste, the vast majority of it is composed of one of the most successful and sustainable packaging materials of modern times, corrugated cardboard. Known industrially as corrugated fiberboard, this paper-based material that's made from a fluted corrugated sheet and flat liner boards is recycled more than any other packaging material in the United States. As of 2020, just under 97% of all expendable corrugated packaging is recovered for recycling, making this inexpensive, durable material an extraordinary recycling success story. Modern paper-based packaging is the direct result of the convergence of three key technologies of the 1800s. The process for pulping wood, the paper making machine, and lithographic printing. Pulping wood involves cooking wood chips and sawdust in the presence of sodium hydroxide and sulfide liquor under high pressure to remove non-fibrous lignin, separating the wood into cellulose fibers. During the cooking process, approximately half the wood dissolves and the remaining pulp is then washed, screened for quality, bleached, and then dried into a fully white material. This processed pulp is then used to produce paper. Paper making machines use a moving woven mesh to create a continuous paper web that aligns the fibers held in the pulp, producing a continuously moving wet mat of fiber. This wet mat is then dried to produce a strong paper web material known as craft paper. By the early 1900s, these processes had reduced the cost of paper enough to make it useful for a wide range of disposable packaging products. Simultaneously, the demand for packaging was rapidly growing as the Industrial Revolution brought about an explosion in manufacturing and the distribution of consumer goods. The invention of several paper-based packaging forms and processes stemmed from this boom, with the corrugated fiberboard shipping container quickly becoming the most dominant. The first known widespread use of corrugated paper was in the 1850s, with an English patent being issued in 1856 to Edward Charles Healy and Edward Ellis Allen. This early corrugation was formed using a fluted iron, and its purpose was to make ruffled Elizabethan collars, as well as cushioning for men's hats. Shortly thereafter, American Albert L. Jones would be granted a patent for the first corrugated paper packaging material in 1871. Jones's design specifically employed corrugation to serve as cushioning for wrapping glass bottles. Three years later, Oliver Long would patent an improvement on Jones's design with the addition of an inherited single paper facing to prevent the unfolding of the corrugation, forming the basis for a modern corrugated fiberboard. By 1882, American Robert H. Thompson would receive the first patent for a double-sided corrugated board material. He would go on to develop machinery, processes, and various forms of wrappers based around corrugated paper. The first corrugated board plant would be opened in 1883 in London, with a German plant following in 1886 in Kirchberg. His company, Thompson & Norris, would maintain a manufacturing and sales monopoly on corrugated bottle wrapping paper for the life of his patent. These early corrugated bottle wrappings were made from thin straw sheets that were dipped in water and then passed through heated fluted rollers. A typical bottle wrapper was single-faced, with excess facing extending past the corrugated paper to fold around the neck and at the bottom. Thompson's first double-faced corrugated product would use unrolled single-faced bottle wrappings that were pulled through a machine that applied both adhesive and the second liner by a series of brushes and cut the final product into sheets. The process would later be improved with a step that piled dozens of sheets within a press, setting the adhesives under pressure. In 1870, American Robert Gere, a Brooklyn printer and paper bag maker, had discovered that by cutting increasing cardboard in one operation, he could make prefabricated cartons. 
In a partnership with the Thompson & Norris company, the concept would be applied to double-faced corrugated stock, giving rise to the production of the first corrugated fiberboard boxes. These boxes were first used for light express deliveries in New York City, with Wells Fargo being one of the first successful adopters. Pleased with their performance, Wells Fargo agents would go on to recommend the product to their shippers, and by the turn of the century, the corrugated cardboard box began replacing custom-made wooden crates and boxes previously used for trade. In 1903, the first use of corrugated fiberboard boxes for rail transport occurred when the Kellogg brothers secured an exception to the wooden box requirement by railroads of the Central Freight Association. This motivated nine major manufacturers of packaging products to unite in 1905 in an unprecedented cooperative effort between competitors, forming an association called the Corrugated Paper Patents Company. Their goal was to standardize corrugated packaging and make it fully accepted by all railroads. By 1906, the first specifications would be drafted and quickly adopted by both railroads and eventually most of the transportation industry. Modern corrugated fiberboard can be easily manufactured in massive quantities in a fully automated process. Many corrugation machines can produce as much as 1,000 feet of product per minute. This is achieved using just three constituent elements, paper, steam, and an adhesive. Rolls of paper stock are first mounted onto unwinding stands and are pulled into the machine at the feeding side of the corrugator, also known as the wet end. The paper medium is heated to around 176 to 190 degrees Celsius or about 350 to 380 degrees Fahrenheit with pressurized steam at around 12.4 bar or 180 psi, making it more flexible so it can be formed into a fluted pattern at the corrugating rolls. The corrugating rolls are gear-like cylinders that are designed to shape the paper medium into a fluted structure as it moves through them. As the newly formed fluted paper leaves these rolls, an adhesive is applied to the flute tips, and the first liner is roller pressed on. The paper stock that forms this liner is often pre-treated with steam and heat before the binding process. The combination of heat, pressure, and steam causes the adhesive to form a gel which creates a bond between the two papers. This single liner corrugated medium is known as a single face web. The adhesives used in modern corrugated fiberboard are typically water-based, food-grade corn starches combined with additives. They offer excellent paper adhesion qualities while remaining both inert for food use and biodegradability. In order to produce double-liner corrugated fiberboard, the single-faced web is then processed through a mechanism within the machine known as a double-facer or double-backer. Here a second liner is applied, once again by adding adhesive to the fluted tips on the other side of the paper medium. However, this bond is formed far more gradually as the board passes over heated plates in a hot plate section. This is done to prevent crushing of the flutes. The double liner corrugated fiber board produced at this stage is far too stiff to be rolled, so it's cut into sheets that are matched to the customer's requirements. These sheets are then stacked and allowed to rest in a heated environment for a predetermined period of time. Because of the added moisture from steam and the starch adhesives, moisture changes in the curing phase must be closely controlled to prevent warping. After curing, the sheets may be coated with molten wax to create a water-resistant barrier if the packaging is expected to be exposed to excessive amounts of moisture, such as with produce or frozen food products. Modern corrugated fiberboard is made primarily from fast-growing pine with some of the larger packaging companies owning their own sustainable forests that are dedicated to packaging. When trees are harvested, only the trunk is used. The pulping process begins with debarking and chipping of the harvested trees. While the first packaging papers relied on the chemical-based craft pulping process, modern production relies primarily on mechanical pulping due to its lower cost and higher yield. In this process, the chips are forced against a revolving stone while being sprayed with water to remove the fibers. However, the trade-off to this process is that it produces a lower quality paper due to its inability to remove lignin, though nearly all of the wood is usable, giving almost twice the yield of craft pulping. While recycled material can be used instead of virgin wood, this tends to produce a lower quality paper. Because of this, its use is generally limited to hidden parts of packaging products. 
When a production run of corrugated fiberboard is done, a target set of specifications based on customer requirements determine both the quality control and physical properties of the fiberboard. Some of these key metrics are the moisture content, absorbability, bursting strength, compressibility, dimensional accuracy, and flatness. Moisture content in particular greatly affects the strength properties of the fiberboard as it deviates from a typical range of 6 to 9 percent. In order to achieve these specified properties, the corrugated medium, flute size, adhesive, and liner board configuration are varied. Flute size in particular forms the basis for most fiberboard specifications. The most common flute sizes are designated A, B, C, E, and F or microflute, with C flute being the most popular. These designations specify the order that the flutes were invented and have no relationship to their size. Newer, thinner flute configurations, such as our flute, are gaining momentum as their 30% lower weight results in lower supply chain costs and storage requirements. Ultimately, most of the corrugated fiberboard that is produced is used for packaging, specifically boxes. While seemingly trivial, designing corrugated packaging that is both economical and can survive the harsh environments of shipping, while being suitable for marketing and consumer appeal, is a challenging task faced by packaging engineers. The most popular box configuration is known as the regular slotted container or RSC packaging. Pioneered in 1906 by Thompson and Norris, RSCs are characterized by having all flaps cut to the same length from the score to the edge, with the longer major flap meeting in the middle. Other common box configurations are the full telescope design style container or FTD, the wraparound blank, the five panel folder or FPF, the rolled end tray with locking cover, the bliss style, and the pre-glued auto bottom with RSC top flaps. However, as the retail environment continues to grow more competitive and packaging becomes a larger part of marketing, more dynamic designs that deviate from standard shipping configurations are becoming more prevalent. While it's common for box production to begin immediately after corrugation processing within integrated production plants, some facilities known as sheet plants start with corrugated fiberboard sheet stock that is produced externally. In both cases, the corrugated sheets are run through a splitter scoring machine that scores and trims the corrugated stock into sheets known as box blanks. From here, the box blanks are then processed by a machine called a flexo or flexographic machine. Within the flexographic machine, the final packaging product is created. Flexographic machines employ both printing dies and rotary die cutters on a flexible sheet that are fitted to large rollers. As the box blanks are automatically fed through the rollers within the machine, it is trimmed, printed, cut, and scored. In some cases, further processing by machines that only perform one of these steps may occur. Additionally, a machine known as a curtain coater is also utilized to apply a coat of wax for moisture-resistant packaging. These unfolded boxes are either assembled on site or at the customer's facilities in a machine known as a folder gluer that assembles the final box. The recyclability of corrugated containers is one of its main advantages over other packaging materials. They can easily be compressed and baled for cost-effective waste transport, and processing corrugated waste is straightforward and relatively inexpensive. The process begins with the baled waste being shredded and put into a large vat of warm water known as a hydropulper that both cleans the material and creates a pulp slurry from it. The slurry is then run through multiple stages of screening to remove broken glass, tape, staples, and other non-fiber contaminants. Finally, the slurry is sent through an industrial magnet to remove metal contaminants. Chemicals are also applied to decolorize the mixture of inks within the slurry. Because the paper produced by purely recycled material will have a dull finish and poor wear characteristics, virgin pulp is typically blended into the slurry to improve its quality. This blended pulp is then directly used to produce new paper. Recycling paper-based packaging is so effective that only 75% of the energy used to produce virgin paper packaging is needed to make new cardboard from recycled stock. Aside from diverting waste materials from landfills, it requires both 50% less electricity and 90% less water to produce. In fact, it's estimated that recycling a single ton of corrugated containers saves 1.1 barrels of oil 390 kilowatt hours of energy expenditure, and 5 cubic meters of landfill space. 
In addition to the recyclability of paper, the move to inks based on soybean oil and the use of biodegradable waxes and other eco-friendly coatings are becoming more popular in packaging manufacturing, raising the bar even further for sustainability in the wake of a growing consumer appetite for more cardboard. In the making of this video, I found it astonishing how something so trivial and underappreciated as cardboard boxes took decades of experimentation and engineering refinement to perfect. Even today, packaging engineers must strike a balance between cost, manufacturability, application effectiveness, and even marketability to produce these unnoticed wonders of the modern world. Applying scientific thinking to home in on a design solution is a critical part of engineering, and with Brilliant, building critical thinking skills to attack design challenges has never been easier. Brilliant is my go-to tool for diving headfirst into learning a new concept. It's a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. Because to truly learn something, it takes more than just watching it. You have to experience it. With this in mind, Brilliant has been tirelessly revamping their courses to introduce even more interactivity. And with their recent updated scientific thinking course, you'll be able to examine the world around us through the eyes of scientific principles. In this course, you'll dispense with number crunching and mathematics in search of something more useful, physical insight. You'll be able to discover the truth for yourself using interactive exercises that let you experience the principles of science firsthand. With Brilliant, you learn in depth and at your own pace. It's not about memorizing or regurgitating facts. You simply pick a course you're interested in and get started. If you feel stuck or made a mistake, an explanation is always available to help you through the learning process. If you'd like to try out Brilliant for free and get 20% off a year of STEM learning, click the link in the description below or visit brilliant.org forward slash newmind.